Hey, my name is Brett McLaughlin, and I am with O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Michael Morrison, who is an independent software developer, worked for Stalefish Labs, which is your company, right? Yep. I know you do a lot of iPad and iPhone development. And I have to admit, when, when you told me we were going to be doing tables and, and optimization of tables... You got I, excited. Yeah, I took a nap, and then after the <laughs> nap, I mean, convince me that, that me or anyone else is going to want to spend the next hour and a half optimizing my tables. Well, let me ask you this. Of, of every, I, Think about all the iPhone apps you use in a given yep. day. Yep. How many of them involve you flicking the screen like this and a, and a bunch of items flying by? A pretty, a pretty good number. Okay, so all of those, all those apps are using tables. Okay. A lot of them poorly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so define poorly in this context. Yeah, poorly in this context, mean, context means when you flick it, it went... Uh, 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 and it, kind and of it, and it jittered. Yeah, okay. it jittered. What, what, what you're shooting for and what every app should strive for it's just glassy smooth. You flick it and those things just go okay. zipping by. That's, that's table optimization. So that's what we're dealing with, this kind of speed and efficiency. Because I think I think about it as like everything's in its place and everything lines up, but you're talking about right. the user interface and experience. Yeah, we're talking about user experience, performance, speed. That, that, that's so it. we're taking presumably a, a sucky app and making it not suck? I mean, is that the basic theme of the day? <laughs> that's exactly what it is, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Let's get to work. <laughs> So you, you, you could feasibly fiddle with your gradient now mm -hmm. and tweak it and say, you know what, maybe I'm down to just that left image and the top label being right. tr having transparency. And I've really, you know, I've done some damage here in terms yeah. of eliminating yeah. problematic subviews. So at this point, we would really need our, our little iconic, wh whatever these are, you know, the public and the, the yep. paid. Yep. Those would need the to be transparent. Mm -hmm. And then our top two labels. Yep. But these three bottom ones can go white. Right. Or, but, or go green, I guess, if you're looking at it in yeah. instruments. Yeah, and, and speaking of the green, I think it's worth uh, going and running in instruments one more time. And, seeing and, on the device. And just seeing the progress on the device. Okay. So we've determined that location actually does need to be clear unless we changed yes. our gradient. And yes. we're not going to delve into Photoshop in this particular oh, gosh, course. No. So oh, let's leave our gradient as is. a lot is. longer course. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get back on the phone. And let's run it again now in instruments. I don't need to be changing code. Uh, core animation not available. So did we not set it to the, uh, <laughs> we're still in the simulator, aren't we? That's correct. We're still in the simulator, and we, if you recall, we don't have access to core animation in the simulator. Let's switch over to the device. Now, one thing that uh, bit me a few times is when you say run in performance tool, mm -hmm. it does not automatically build and run. Okay. So you'll be running so with an old version. old version. Yeah, so always do a oh. build first. Yeah. So I just did a build. Now we say gotcha. run. Yeah, because because a lot of times you get in the habit of doing build and run in one step. Right. You know, it's like uh, command Y. I think is build and run and debugger. Mm -hmm. You get in the habit of doing that shortcut. Mm -hmm. Different when you're saying run with performance tool. Always manually do a build, then run. So okay. now we're we're going into uh, instruments. <clears throat> so we'll see the app. We should see the bottom be green, and we should see those top three items. I guess the top two will be red in that first cell because we still have that one image. We never went back. Correct. Yeah, we never the corrected that, one. that but one. But in it. general, the top half of the cell is, is red, per se. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So now what we've seen, the, one of the main things we've changed is that uh, that five, the little five skateboard image is now mm -hmm. opaque. Mm -hmm. And then our top two labels have the transparency. Okay. Um, and then well, the top image would be red if we went and fixed top it image should, yeah, would be back to red. Now, the two images we did not manipulate that we could are the little media icons. Yeah. The, uh, the little video camera and the little uh, regular camera. Because they're down in the bottom half. They're in the bottom, so those absolutely could be opaque right. as well. So, so at know. this point, if you were doing this for real, like if you were going to deliver this, you'd probably go change all those images to match up with what we figured right. out Right. You, you would take all the images that impact that bottom area of the cell, and you would make those all non-alpha, non-transparent. Okay. And in that case, we would have the whole lower half of the cell green now, no okay. compositing, and we would just have red at the top. Okay. Which would be, you, you could argue there that we've taken, so the, the rating image is a view, the uh, two, media, two media images, two more subviews, mm -hmm. and those two labels, two more subviews. We've taken five out of the eight subviews and, mm -hmm. gotten, and made them opaque. Okay. That's, a pretty, that's a pretty good turnaround to still maintain our exact same right. look and feel. So you just said something that, that kind of set off my web head. Um, tables, 
and cells within tables and subviews within the cells within the tables. I mean, from a w that, that's really bad on the website. Nested tables and all the days <laughs> when people didn't know how to use divs. And right, right. It, is is <clears throat> there a are these subviews costing us performance? That just a let me just stop there because I've reached the end of my expertise in iPhone. <laughs> are are all these nested subviews a problem in themselves? I mean, I think performance there. I think yes, and it, so. Taking a step back, what your question is is asking, what you're asking is, are subviews in and of themselves problematic? That's exactly what I meant to ask. <laughs> yes, well put, me. And the answer is yes, they are. Okay. So, to some degree, we've been we've been working with.